All right, so it's uh, daylight, but it's getting late in the day, and uh, uh, thought I'd come over here now and uh, show you the uh, Kubota fertilizer spreader in the daylight, and this is it. And I've got it set. I've been working on it. Uh, didn't take any video, but uh, I had to trim the drive shaft just a little bit. So I pulled those guards off and I probably trimmed it about an inch on each end. So uh, when it's all the way up, that's the worst case. And uh, you know, I held them side by side from being on the ground to all the way up. The manual says the worst case is when it's level, the PTO here and the PTO there. But that's not true. As you come on up, that arc draws it on back towards the tractor. And uh, so I wanted to be sure that if somebody got on this thing and for whatever reason just pulled the lift all the way up, uh, it wouldn't bottom out and do some damage. So, but I didn't want to cut it off too much because I'm pretty sure the lift arms on the Massey Ferguson 1105 are a little uh, longer. Now, this is a, a Vicon. Uh, Kubota bought Vicon. I, I, I don't know if I pronounce it right, but can ever land I, I, Again, I don't know how you pronounce it and I could never spell it But uh, apparently they bought Vicon and then Kubota bought can ever land and and uh, That's kind of where Kubota hay tools come from is the Vicon side as I as I understand it and this fertilizer spreader is one of those tools and uh the equivalent Vicon to this is a 1004. Now, uh, this is a VS600, and what's missing on this uh, Kubota is a hopper extension. I've got a hopper extension ordered. Uh, I want to say this thing will hold 1,300 pounds of fertilizer. And then with the hopper extension on, it'll hold 2,200 pounds. So when I when I was looking for a replacement for my uh, when I was looking for a replacement for my uh, Lely fertilizer spreader, I wanted to at least have the ability at some point down the road to be able to use one-ton spreaders. I'm gonna show you this, and then I'll turn it off, turn the tractor off, so I can talk a little better, but. Uh, this this fertilizer spreader is not something you see in the United States uh, very much. It does not have a spinner. Instead, this little tube right here goes back and forth, and it throws the fertilizer out. It throws the fertilizer out in both directions, and you would think that would is a pretty goofy setup, but it's very very accurate very even in the spread I did a lot of reading on this thing you know it's like I study these things like you know taking an exam and uh, I even looked at the Lely which they still make and they make a bigger one but uh, I just felt like this was the sp spreader for our farm and my John Deere it'll lift this spreader and a ton of fertilizer but you're getting within about 500 pounds on the limit. So when this spreader's on the John Deere, we won't fill it uh, past, uh, well, we won't put it past the orange right here. And uh, that'd be like 1,300 pounds, but really we'd probably stop at 1,000 pounds. And uh, so let me show you this thing working. Now that's the first time I pulled the uh, PTO lever on this spreader. It's the first time that thing has wagged since I bought it. 
And this bar right here is probably a pretty good idea. You can get your teeth knocked out on that thing. And so it wigwags like that. And in Europe, that's what they refer to these spreaders as, are wigwag spreaders. So let me cut that off and turn the tractor off, and then uh, I'll come back to this. All right, so hopefully we can uh, hear a little better. Maybe the wind noise won't be too bad. But uh, so uh, this spreader, uh, as I mentioned, it has a very accurate uh, throw. Uh, these little spouts, if you will, you can get various lengths ones for different applications. Like in an orchard, they, a lot of people use these things in an orchard going down between the trees and uh they'll uh they'll use a very short one uh you can get a uh kit that will just let it throw to one side if you need it and uh you know uh they have an option for wheels and uh i, I basically bought this thing uh with no options <clears throat> and i wanted to see how it would go and uh so I can go back and get the, uh, uh, I can go back and buy the, the add-ons, if you will, uh, without going through the parts counter. So that, that was good. And um, I'm going to let this thing down just a little bit, maybe so we can see inside. So inside this tub, there's a there's a huge agitator you know it's 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 bigger than my it's much bigger than my hand it doesn't look very big in the in the uh in the video but on my lely the auger in it was just a little nub and it would get clogged with fertilizer and i think maybe some of these little uh tractor supply type spinners are kind of the same way if something gets down in the bottom of this spreader uh that cast iron agitator is going to knock the crap out of it. And uh, But they make a screen that sets down uh, about, I don't know, about 12 inches above. And uh, it's for chunks, you know, keeping chunks from going in, going in there and potentially clogging it. And then they have a... Uh, uh, they have a little, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? They have another agitator that screws on onto that that is m more like uh, sheet metal. And it has wings that uh, come up along the side of the of the box. And uh, it's for lime. You can spread lime with this, although the people that have these don't, uh, they don't really recommend lime. I didn't get any of that stuff. The the uh, the feedback I got on the internet, and I reached out to some uh, uh, farming forums in uh, the UK and asked some questions about these. And the, really, the only uh, option that they recommended, and I didn't get it, but I probably will, maybe, is uh, this lever right here, and it's telescoping. Uh, you can let it up or, you know, have it down. And when I push down on it, maybe you can see that. But the uh, openings, they, th that opens and closes. So you can see right here how that works. And... And so uh, they make a hydraulic cylinder that'll actuate that, just a little single acting cylinder. And I thought about buying it, but, uh, you know, as my dad said to me one time, he bought a little John Deere uh, riding lawnmower. And I asked him, you know, how come he didn't get a, like a full-up garden tractor? And he told me, he said, you know, I'm, I was buying with my wallet. And in many ways, on this one, I was buying with my wallet. I didn't want to sink a big pile of money into this thing and I could have added thousands of dollars to it and uh, but what I wanted to do is I wanted just to see how it would do and uh, you know I can probably live with this uh, on an open station tractor you know I can reach up 
and turn it on and off and then uh in the you know on the cab of the, my massey ferguson i guess i could crack the window open and uh, reach out and uh, turn it on and off but i don't know that i really need that uh it's not like we're you know fertilizing a little patch here and then running to another patch over there and and so on and so forth uh, i think what i can do is i can just idle this thing down if i need to let's say the big massey i can idle it down get off the tractor and turn that off and do the vice versa to turn it on uh, one of the options i did not get that i will probably get is you can see there's three openings and they're pretty big they're probably uh i'd say they're two and a half inches in diameter and there's three of them and what regulates that opening is this little handle right here and uh you, there's a chart uh, that you can calibrate that you can calibrate it it'll tell you uh there's numbers on here and I'm not seeing them at the moment, but uh, this is still all new to me. But, you know, you can calibrate this thing. There's a chart that tells you, you know, what, what setting to put this on so that when it slides up against here, you're getting, you know, you're getting the right opening on, on, those, uh, on those holes down in the hopper. And, but what happens is you can use this fertilizer spreader for seed you can you know you can sow timothy or orchard grass or oats or whatever you're going to do and what happens is and this is what happens with the laley and with some of the tractor supply fertilizer spreaders is if you just want a little a bit of fertilizer going out you know you can see there's just a little tiny opening right there and and it, and, and and it'll clog and so that's particularly uh, a problem when you're sowing seed because obviously you're not going to be putting tons of seed per acre like you would fertilizer. So they have what they call a fine seed kit and it goes on down there and it closes off two of those three holes so that when you calibrate this thing, even though you're putting out a small amount of seed, one of these holes is, you know, uh, I don't know if it's full open or, you know, three quarters open, but uh, you're basically uh, emulating what you're doing with fertilizer, except with one hole as far as, you know, letting stuff flow out of here. That's called a fine seed kit. And uh, so I might get one of those. Uh, this thing, uh, you can have, it has a kit for wheels that are just, you know, they're they're when you park this thing, it's got four wheels on the front and four wheels on the back, and you know if you're lucky enough to have a a uh, shop with a concrete floor, you can let this thing down, take it off your tractor, and then just roll it around wherever you want to go. You know, in my case, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably set it in the corner of my barn on a big sheet of plywood and then just roll it as far back in the corner as I can. Uh, uh, I kind of laughed at it. They look kind of cheesy and cheap. And the dealer, the sales guy that I worked with, uh, he, he said the same thing. He kind of laughed at it. But when they were trying to maneuver this thing around in the shop, he told me, he said, you know, uh, after kind of wrestling with this thing, I could see where that uh, wheel kit would be really nice. So I may come back and get that. I might come back and get that. Uh, so there's a few options. And of course, I've got the hopper extension that turns this thing into a 2,200 pound uh, uh, fertilizer spreader. And then uh, another thing I'd like to get that they offer is a cover. I mean, I, I know I can throw a tarp over over this thing, and but uh, they make a cover that's fitted. And one of the things I'd like to be able to do and I've done with my Laley before, is to put fertilizer down when there's like just a light mist or just a little bit of a drizzle, just a fine drizzle, and I, especially with nitrogen, and then I know it's going to get washed in the ground. And uh, so I might consider that with this one. 
Uh, one of the things I like about the pendulum that I didn't like about the Lely or any other spreader is this the geometry of what the way this thing throws this the uh, fertilizer nothing gets on the back of your tractor and you can see on this tractor the rust that all of this rust is from fertilizer uh, that's splashed back on this tractor uh, fertilizing with the Lely and I bought this tractor new so it kind of bugs me uh, but there's nothing you can do about it, and I would uh, rinse it off and, you know, uh, lube it down, maybe squirt some uh, uh, oil on, you know, some of these places, and it, it just, it wasn't good, and I like it that this one doesn't throw fertilizer all over the tractor. People advise me to buy a uh, pull behind, and... Uh, you know, something with two or three or four ton capacity. Uh, there's a couple issues with that for me. Uh, one of them is, is that, uh, you know, I know my 1105 Massey can handle it, but when we get on these hills up in here, I don't think it's safe. And so uh, I just felt like I didn't want to do that. And the other, the other thing was, uh, they're big, they take up so much barn space, and this is so much uh, more compact. So that's a consideration too. And then obviously, I won't tell you the price on this thing. I don't mind sharing. Uh, this This fertilizer spreader cost about $4,280. It was less than uh, $4,300. And, uh, I felt that that was uh, uh, reasonable for what I'm getting. Uh, this is uh, the reputation of these is they last and last and last years and years and years. You know, 20 years is not unusual out of one of these things or more. No more than I fertilize, uh, it'll outlast me and it'll my kids, it'll, if they take up this farming, it'll last them, you know, half their lives or more. Uh, the, the pull behinds are really, really expensive. And then you look at, uh, the used pull behinds and most of the ones I looked at, probably all the ones I looked at online and in person, uh, they were just rust buckets. I mean, the chains and things that take the fertilizer out to the spinners, everything's all you know, nasty and rusted, and I know they got stainless steel components and things like that, but um, I just felt like, you know, uh, this would be a good investment for our farm. I didn't feel like uh, that amount of money uh, is going to paralyze anything up here, and certainly our hay revenue uh, takes this thing, takes care of this, uh, e you know, easy peasy, and uh Speaking of rust, the Lely was real bad about rust. This thing has got a, uh, the hopper's plastic. It's fiberglass reinforced. And, uh, and it may, maybe it, it might be just all fiberglass. I don't, I don't really know, but I do know it's fiberglass reinforced. And to get it off, you've just got these little things right here. You pull them loose on this side and the one on that side. And this whole thing just lifts off. I imagine it's a little bit heavy. It's probably a two-man deal to lift this thing off. Because it, it's pretty thick. You know, it's not a quarter inch thick. But it's every bit of three sixteenths. Or whatever the metric equivalent is to that. And, uh, and then at the bottom, uh, there's stainless steel uh, down there. Obviously, the agitator is uh, uh, cast iron of some sort. And the, from what I read online, uh, these things are really easy to clean. And, uh, you know, you, all your fertilizer is moving away from the machine. Uh, unless I spill some fertilizer, there really isn't any reason that there would be fertilizer down around on here. Unless I guess it, maybe it just blows back on it. But uh, there's a, a plastic shield over top of the gearbox. And uh, this thing has a lot of grease fittings on it. I say a lot. I don't know. Uh, 
you know, I don't know if it's a crazy amount, but there's a diagram of one of them right there. And the recommendation is, you know, you hose this thing down real good, and then you go around the grease joints uh, the, where the grease circs are, and you put grease in them, and uh, and then you uh, that pushes any uh, water out of the bearings. And so uh, uh, the the reputation, the feedback I got online, particularly from the UK, was uh, very easy to maintain and keep rust free if you'll just stay after it. But if you do let them rust up, evidently they're a bear. So we're going to be very vigilant on this one, uh, not for that to happen. It has a slip clutch on it. I got a... Uh, I got to check that tomorrow. I'm just about out of day today. I've had a long day of it, and uh, but I wanted to show this spreader to you. And uh, you know, again, this thing is uh, it's a it's a in the catalog. It's called a VS1000, and the Vicon equivalent to it is a, a VS104. And I think the 104 means 104 uh, 1,004 kilograms which works out to around 2,200 pounds of uh, fertilizer. But the base unit is the VS600, and what makes it, I think there's a 800 and a 1,000, and the difference is the height of the hopper. And I've got the biggest uh, fertilizer spreader Kubota offers in, with the extended hopper for the VS1000. Now, they made bigger ones than this and if you look online and find a Vicon uh, brochure you'll see uh, some of them hold I think uh, over I want to say over two tons they're, they get pretty big but they're still three-point mounted something about Europe uh, they like uh, three-point mounted implements and uh, but uh, so uh, this is the biggest I could get and like I said I wanted uh, whether we continue with bags for another year, two or three, until I can get a front-end loader or rig up something to, uh, you know, put one-ton bags in here, uh, we have the we have the potential for one-ton bags with this spreader. So my feeling was, you know, cry once, spend the money, and get something that'll handle a one-ton bag, and in keeping with our you know, kind of our farm business plan, if you will. We're trying to move away from uh, older, uh, junkier equipment that constantly needs repairs and uh, into later model or new or newer equipment. I have a day job. Uh, the goal is to come up here and put the equipment to work. It's not to come up here and stand on my head and then put the equipment to work and find out it's midnight. Uh, and we've done all that. We're pretty good. We're pretty good at uh, uh, old equipment too. And uh, the other half of that equation is I'm no young guy anymore. And uh, when I retire, uh, I want to be able to get on a tractor that starts and the tires aren't flat. And uh, you know, at some point, I want to have a front end loader on a tractor. And instead of me being I hope I live a long time, you know, into ger what my friend uh, calls geriatric farming. Uh, I don't mind lifting a few 50-pound bags of fertilizer, but when you start lifting tons and tons of fertilizer, uh, I don't care too much for that. And the amount of fertilizer that will go down on this farm will increase as we continue to open up fields over there and uh, the field over there at my barn. So uh, it'll be nice. Uh, to be able to drop a ton bag in here and also uh, right now based on our soil samples we uh, uh, we put down different amounts of nitrogen phosphorus and potash depending on how that soil sample comes about comes back so that field over there it might get a little different uh, treatment on fertilizer than the field over here uh, regardless, we are going out three times, once for nitrogen, once for potash, and once for uh, phosphorus, which in our case is diammonium phosphate, DAP. And, uh, but I can get the one-ton bags mixed 
in the ratios that I need. And so again, with the day job, and there's only so many hours in a day, it'll, it'll be nice to take a big bag that's pre-mixed with all the NPK ingredients, dump it in the hopper and go out and take care of this field, dump another one in the hopper and go out and take care of that field or however many dumps I need to do. And uh, so this is, this will be a time saver. And uh, I just really got my fingers crossed that it's gonna work out on this farm. So the next thing I gotta do is tomorrow, uh, I need to uh, uh, adjust that slip clutch. I've already set the height on it. 29 and three quarter inches seems to be the magic number between this and my crone mower conditioner for the height off the ground to the to the pins. Uh, I need to set my stabilizer bars. It's it's kind of stabilizers. It's kind of moving this way a little bit. I just pulled it out here uh, to show you uh, the spreader, and uh, and then I'm gonna go around and check all the grease circs, and I'm gonna put a wrench on all the nuts and bolts, and just make sure everything's tight. And then uh, I'm going to bone up on the manual tonight. Uh, you can calibrate. One of the options that I didn't get, but I probably will, is there's a box that snaps on the end of this uh, frame down here. And this thing kind of wigwags in it. And you can uh, turn your spreader on, and it'll catch all the fertilizer that's coming out of it. And then you take and weigh it, and that tells you how many pounds per minute. And based on that, you can look at a chart, or you can go to Kubota's website. They have a real nice online calculator that you can put your ground speed in and what kind of, I think, the throw width you want, uh, how many pounds uh, fertilizer a minute. And they also take into account the uh, nature of the fertilizer, how, how granular it is, how round, how irregular shape. And they have pictures of it for you as a guide. But I gather that the ultimate is just to, uh, for whatever fertilizer you got, you determine the uh, pounds per minute coming out. And uh, you can precisely put down fertilize uh, with this spreader. And, uh, but I think you can probably get pretty close just with the settings right out of the box. They have an extensive chart. And, and and then of course the online calculator does it all for you, and that's what I'm going to give it. A, that's what I'm going to try. I'm not I'm not planning on, uh, you know, rounding up fertilizer uh, tomorrow and weighing it. Uh, I'll probably do that uh, another day, and uh, you know, figure out what that's all about. And 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 I'm not sure it'll make that big a difference. We're still dropping toilet paper. Uh, on the ground to see where we've been so it's not like we've got GPS guidance on the other end of the tractor uh, to go along with whatever precise measurement we got coming out here but uh, I do feel like uh, we'll uh, have a we'll have the, a chance to really dial in our fertilizer I think I was pretty good with the Lely uh, this field in particular I could just about come out of the field uh, with an empty spreader going empty just as I came out of the field. Uh, yeah, we'll see about this one. And uh, so I have a video uh, putting some fertilizer down. It'll come and uh, things are starting to get a little busy here. We get done fertilizing and then we got to uh, swerve into getting our sprayer, uh, maintenance on our sprayer ready to go. We got to get, uh, still got to work on some hay wagons and We'll start greasing everything up. I got a complete fluid change I got to do on the John Deere engine, hydraulic fluid, radiator, uh, coolant, uh, everything. Uh, and uh, the big Massey will get an oil change. And we'll probably have the Model 50 Massey out some too. So uh, it's kind of a long video, a lot of me talking, but I wanted to show you the fertilizer spreader, the Kubota uh, VS1000. As it's sitting right here, it's a VS600, but when I get the extension on it, it'll be the 1000, and uh, the equivalent, again, is a Vicon uh, 1004, or the base model, base unit the, without the hopper, the Vicon 16004. Uh, uh, so, kind of long-winded today, but I uh, wanted to show you the spreader. 
Uh, it's starting to get dark again, and I need to park this thing. And uh, we'll talk to you later.